For those of you who are just starting out in the hobby, or maybe you're even a lifelong model builder, using as much information about the prototype you're trying to recreate is essential for a believable model. As model builders and as artists, we tend to look at the world in a little more detail. Whether it was something that we were trained to do or it just comes naturally, this ability of observation helps us reproduce highly detailed objects in miniature. So I'm currently working on a GP9 for my freelance Black Creek and Angels Camp Railroad. Now my railroad is a short line set in 1974 located in the Northern California foothills. That means that because of the drier climate, the equipment is gonna have a nice dusty and grimy look to it. So I've decided to use Central California Traction Company's Jeeps as the main reference for details and weathering since their look and style of operation is similar to what I'm trying to achieve with my own railroad. Now, I take a rather unusual approach to building models compared to most. I like to break each part into sub-assemblies and think of these as models themselves. This allows me to focus on the project details and not get overwhelmed with the project as a whole. And at the moment, my focus is on the trucks. As you can see in the prototype photos, a lot of dirt has collected over the years. Mud splashing onto the side frames and wheels, dirt and dust covers almost the entire truck assembly. Rust is beginning to show in some spots, and large deposits of grease are also starting to show, especially around the wheel bearings. Now that I have a good idea of what I want to accomplish, I'll go ahead and prep my trucks for paint. The locomotive will be battery powered, and so really all I need to do is mask off the gears on the wheels so that the paint won't foul up anything while it's in operation. I'll use masking tape and just wrap it around the axles and the gears just to make sure that everything's protected. Using my airbrush, I'm going to begin by covering the entire truck assembly with Vallejo surface primer. And even though the wheels are black, I like to make sure I've covered every single piece of the truck in order to create uniform colors at the end of the project. Several light passes with the airbrush will ensure that the color lays down properly. And as you can see in the photo, we now have a nice base color for the rest of the project. The trucks on the prototype I'm trying to recreate were painted black like most locomotives. However, there are some like the Union Pacific that actually painted their truck silver. I will load flat black from AK Interactive directly into the airbrush. Then like we did with the primer, I will cover the entire assembly with the color. Acrylics have a tendency to dry pretty quick and clog the airbrush. So I like to test everything on either a piece of paper or the background before I actually paint my project. This way, I can make sure that nothing's clogged or that I have the proper air pressure set on my compressor. And once again, go ahead and cover the entire model with the color using very light passes to ensure that the paint lays down properly. Now that the color is dried, you can still see there's a bit of a shine to the truck. So what we're going to do is tone that down a bit and start adding a little bit of dust, dirt, and grime. We'll start by using two colors from AK Interactive, medium rust and chipping color. The chipping color goes on first and I will load that directly into my airbrush. I will spray the entire truck assembly with this color using really light passes. Now, medium rust was used to highlight certain areas to further enhance the rust effect. But unlike our prototype truck, we still do not have a nice uniform color. We need to somehow blend these colors together. Real dirt from the area that I'm modeling is now brushed onto the entire truck assembly. Now, as I mentioned, I'm using dirt from the location that I'm modeling. You don't actually have to do this. 
I like to only because the Sierra dust is such a specific color, it's pretty hard to recreate. This layer of dirt, no matter where it comes from, is going to help tone down the paint and create a nice uniform color. One thing to note, this dirt has actually been sifted through pantyhose in order to create more of a fine powder. You will notice that there are some pebbles and really small rocks that are making their way onto the model. That's okay. This is going to create an added layer of texture to the entire truck which is going to further enhance the realism. Once I'm happy with the layer of dirt that's been added, I will go ahead and spray the entire truck assembly with a flat varnish. This will protect the current colors that are on the truck and prepare it for the enamel colors coming up in the following steps. Because the paint wasn't completely allowed to dry in between each step for this video, you will notice that some paint has wore off. I will cover those areas by brushing on the dark chipping color and medium rust. The following steps will completely hide any sign that the paint chipped off. For those who have never used pigments before, pigments are powdered color which has a consistency similar to pastel chalk. I will cover the entire truck and then I will give it one last overspray of the acrylic varnish. I really enjoy using washes on most of my projects. Washes can be made from acrylics, from enamel, and from oil paints. And basically what they are, are color that has been thinned to an ink or a very watery consistency. This will allow color to flow into every single one of the nooks and crannies in your model. It will help highlight as well as really bring out the contrast in the shadow areas. In some cases, I like to mix dirt and a wash together and really clump on color in certain areas. This helps to build texture and add a little bit more variety in the color itself. Once I've laid the color on, I will dip my brush into my mineral spirits and allow the mineral spirits to pull the color into all of the cracks in the model. This will give it a more realistic and natural appearance. Another technique I like to use, which represents mud that's splashed up onto the model itself, is I fully load my brush with my color wash, and I will take the tip of my finger and I will flick the color onto the truck. And again, it gives a good representation of mud that has splashed up onto your model. Then once again, in certain areas where the color is a little bit too thick, I will take my mineral spirits and I will wash it onto certain areas of my model. Now I do have to apologize for my hand being so shaky in these last few scenes. Because of the placement of the video camera and this truck being extremely hard to hold, I was nervous that I was going to knock paint off of it. So that's why you see my hand shaking. It is nerves, but not due to the camera. Finally, washes of engine grime, engine oil, dirt, and fuel stains is then washed in in certain areas especially around the wheel bearings and the springs. This will complete the overall look. Once it's dry, you can see if there's any places that need to be touched up, and all you have to do is go back with your mineral spirits and a wash and cover a certain area or even remove color if necessary. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Now, this technique can be used in any scale and any skill level, really. It's quite easy to do. All it takes is a little bit of patience and good reference material. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.